Today, we are fishing for 10 pound bass with giant live bait. A month ago, we met this stranger while pond fishing and he told us about this hidden pond that has some double digit bass in it. There's a big, big bass in there. Really? My son's pulled several 10 pound bass in there. So we decided to go try it out and we ended up catching a lot of fish, but we weren't able to land any of those double digit bass. So our plan is to go back out with giant live bait to entice these big bass to bite. The first step to this adventure is to go to the tackle shop so we can get the supplies for today's live bait journey. The tackle shop that we picked out is a local gas station here in South Georgia. They'll have all the supplies that we'll need. The first thing that we'll need from the store is the supplies for us to catch our live bait. For the bluegill rig, we're going to grab some small hooks, some split shot weights, and some small bobbers. But the most important thing that we need to catch our live bait is some live worms. Now that we've got the supplies for our live bait, we need something to put them in, so we're going to get a live bait bucket and an aerator. Now that we have all the supplies to catch our live bait, we need to get some supplies to catch these big bass. First, we're going to grab some circle hooks, and we also need some bigger bobbers for our live bait rigs. Now it is time to head out to the pond and catch these monsters. All right, Connor, what do we got? Let's see what we got going on here. So we got us a little aerator bucket. And then we've got some other goodies as well. We got some live worms. This is what we're going to be using today to catch the live bait for the big bass. So we're going to pretty much use the live worms for the bluegill. We got one of these baby bubbles, air pumps. We got the live bait bucket so we keep the bluegill in there. We got some bluegill slash brim hooks. Got some little split shots. And we got two different hooks for the bass. We'll talk about this later, but yeah, that's a couple different ones to rig up the bluegill with. If we get hungry, we can eat some of the bluegill. <laughs> yeah, we got a filet knife. <laughs> and uh, that's if we want to use some chunk bait. I think mainly we're gonna be doing live today, but that's just in case. Got some bobbers for the bluegill, and then got some bobbers for the bluegill to fish for bass. So these are to catch the bluegill. These are for the bass. And then Connor got him a little rooster tail. So I think that's about it, right? Yep. Yeah, got one more bobber and that is all the supplies so we're gonna go ahead and get rigged up we have a couple rods with us for the bluegill I also got more in the car which we'll use and show you those later before we get deeper into this video only 27 percent of y'all watching these videos are actually subscribed so if you could take the time hit the subscribe button it really helps the channel i'd appreciate it we're gonna go ahead and rig these up just for our bluegill rig so we can catch our live bait i got one kicking their bass combo and then we got like an xfinity and chore lose combo if you guys want to check out any of the kicking their bass tv x lose combos you can check them out kicking their bass.com i'll pop the link up on the screen and drop the link in the description box down below but let's go ahead and get rigged up two double a's pretty basic there we go all right first things first we gotta rig up the bluegill rig. We're gonna get one of these tiny mustad hooks. This is a size seven, very small panfish hook. So I didn't know if you guys knew, but if you guys look on that hook, this whole back piece is a lot longer than your standard hook. The reason being when a bluegill eats your bait, it tends to go a little deeper and their mouth is so small. So that's therefore you can get the hook out of their mouth. Kind of crazy because I fished with them my whole life and I didn't really know um, why they were made like that until about three years ago. But yeah, that. That is the reasoning behind it. So untie a little uni knot, wet our line, cut our little tag in, boom. All we need is a little split shot. Pretty basic, I don't know what size. These are size seven, I don't really know what that means, but those are split shot, boom. I'll say we can go a little shorter with that. Slide it down, about right there. And this is gonna be trial and error. I haven't fished for bluegill in a minute. We're probably gonna put our bobber about right there and just a, just a standard bobber. What do you call this rig? The bash candy catcher? The, <laughs> the bass candy catcher, I like it. I guess that's what we call it over here. Man, I'm hoping it's gonna be some bass candy today. We have some 10 pounders to catch in that pond. We're on a mission today. You guys saw about the last episode. We're on a mission with this pond and it's to catch a 10 pounder. If I've learned anything over the years, me and my granddad started fishing with just night crawlers, same way. We would catch some bluegill, we put them on the line. We caught some of the biggest bass I've ever seen fishing that way. So we're replicating the old methods, my grandpa's method of catching some big bass. So I'm, I'm excited about it. So that is the rig that we got. We got a bobber, little split shot, then our little hook. Pretty basic, that is our brim rig. We're just gonna go ahead and dive into this. Look at these big old night crawlers. The lady at the store tried to say that they were small. I do not think the god dude those are some those are some big boys right yeah, there. yeah those are some thick boys you know oh boy 
You better calm down. Those are some pretty big ones. <laughs> We're gonna have to break off little pieces for this, for what I would assume. So let's go ahead and get us a little little piece just like that. He just dookied on my hand. That's awesome. We're just gonna break that slimy dude up just like that boy all right we're good so now it's time to do some fishing all right here's our rig got a bobber got a split shot and we got our little hook tiny piece of worm on there pretty basic we got a bait box here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up with water out of this pond here and when we get the fish we're gonna throw them in here and then we also have an aerator which we'll show you once we get some fish so let's go fill this thing up from what I know, there's no gators in this pond, so we don't have to be worried about that yet. Let's wait till we get to the 10 pounder pond, dude. There's a big one in there. Easy. You can get a little less than that. Less than that? Yeah. We gotta think about us driving in the car with it. Too. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that should be good, yeah. And if we need to add more before we go, we can. It's perfect. All right, guys, we got some water. If we get thirsty, we can uh, drink some of that as well. So here's the aerator. Got a little clip on the back of it. What I'm thinking, just make sure we don't make a hole in it. There we go. That's money, dude. Perfect. Got a little aerator. We're gonna test it out. There All we right, go. There we go. Look at that. Yes, sir. I'm about to say we got a defective one. <laughs> we're gonna have to go back to the store. All right, we're good. Time to catch some fish. Okay, let's do it. Come here, you fat boy. I think the best way to do this, I got these little mock scissors. Oh, yeah. Connor, you want a piece? Yeah, I want a piece. Go for it. It's a buffet, man. All you can eat. I'm starving right now, so this is actually the perfect opportunity. Some free lunch. Can't complain, right? There we go. I'm keeping it pretty basic this time. I don't want to catch them too big. Then again, I don't want them too small. I want like that good medium range bluegill. We are going after this 10 pound bass, so the bigger the better, but I don't want one that's bigger than my hand, if you guys know what I'm saying. Let's see if these fish are still eating. Yep, they are right away look at that right away oh he came off no way okay yeah i had him it was a tiny one too man i honestly want him bigger than how that one was look at that that's a bigger one oh that's money connor money size oh my gosh that is bass candy bro right there you can't have a better size i wouldn't want to go too big i wouldn't want to go too small that one's gonna still have a lot of activity you want them to have a good bit of kick and uh that's a Perfect bluegill, heck yeah. There we go. I don't know how many we're gonna wanna get, but that is just money, man. Beautiful. Here, okay. Here we go, let's go for another one. Stack up the live bait. Those actually got me all out of whack. He keeps putting the uh, reel on the left side here, knowing that I gotta have it on the right side. I'd shorten your line a little bit too. See, he's already got me. Yeah. See him playing with me. There we go. That's, so a, that's, that's a smaller one. Cool. Perfect bass game. Yeah, that's that's literally candy. It's good to have options though, you know what I mean? I think that's a good one to have. And I got my worm back still. Yeah, it's good to have options. The other one's twice as big. I think it'd be good to have both of them. That size is actually like probably what we want. I don't Maybe know, bigger. you'd be surprised. I used one that was three times the size of that big one in there. I had a freaking dude. You'd be surprised. These bass like them big ones. Yeah, that's the money spot, Connor, here right there. You got him. Yep. Yes, sir. That's a good size, too. It's a little big. That's like in the middle between the two. Look at that. That's money right there. See, we got to have a variety. We already said it. There we go. Oh, you got one? Nice. Another smaller one? I don't want a couple more bigger ones like yeah, that we one. Oh, I think my worm just literally fell off on the concrete. Ooh, that's your worst decision, little boy. Oh yeah, keep coming. Come on. Oh, gotcha. We got are getting a little stubborn now. They know what we're doing. Just want a couple more. Something keeps playing with it. He's trying to be smart about it. Oh my gosh. I thought he was trying to be smart about it. Then he just freaking jerked my whole bobber down you know i'd be much better at this but the the problem is like i just i only catch big fish so like this is tough for me oh see <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm not even sure what that thing is actually dude what is this 
Uh, it might be a war mouth. It's got a mouth of a bash, and it's yeah. got red eyes. That's a war mouth. Do we use those? Uh, probably not. Okay. I, I think we can, but I'd rather not. Can you lift these things? Yeah, you can lift them. They won't get you. Dude, it's got teeth. Nah, nah. No? They're like bass. Noah's telling me it's called a war mouth. It's got like red eyes. It's got like the mouth of a bat, so it's kind of cool. But we're gonna throw him back. Thank you, buddy. I don't know what that thing is. I don't know if that's like some sort of wasp. Yeah. See that big thing? Oh, no, that's a hornet. That's a hornet. Yeah, don't get, bit, don't get uh, stung by those. Okay, well, he has this crazy worm on the ground right there. Bro, you better chill. Look at that worm, dude. It's like bluish green. He's literally carrying that big worm. Where? I swear the hornet is. Isn't that crazy? Dude, I like looked down and I thought it was one of those worms crawling, but it was the hornet like holding it. He's taking that thing home, man. Dude, that's insane. There we go, Connor. Yes. This feels like a better one. Oh, that's money. Look at that one, bro. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. I think we're sitting at a good spot with the live bait, guys. I think it's about time to go feed these bass. All right, guys, we just made it out to the beautiful 10 pound pond. If you guys saw in the last episode, we came out here and uh, it was a whole journey. You guys need to go check it out. It'll be linked down below, but we're fishing for 10 pound bass of live bluegill today. That is the whole plan. There's a big alligator in here. So that's the first thing that I kind of want to check for, especially when we have these live bluegill. You know, this gator is going to be, he might be a little antsy. I'm not sure yet. The other day he was fine. He was kind of just standing in the middle. I just want to make sure he's not going to try to come up here and eat our bait or try to catch our fish. So I kind of want to just put an eye on him and see if we can spot him. There's a gator right there, a little tiny small one going away from the bank. That's not the big one. I want to say that's the big one out there in the middle. I guess only time would tell, but the one thing is we do need to keep an eye on that because I don't know how crazy this gator is. This pond gets, you know, filled up by natural water too. It's not like it's just a random made, man made pond that they put water in. It has natural water flowing into it. Therefore, you're going to have creatures like gators stumble upon this place. So, something we just got to keep an eye out for. I don't want to have any mistakes today, but we're going to go ahead and rig up, go ahead and get these bluegill out in the water. So, we got our spinning combo kicking their bass. You know, this thing's super versatile. We've caught redfish on it, big catfish, massive bass, and today we're live bait fishing with it. So, that's just cool to see. Got a big old bobber there. Then we got a little split shot. I just left it on from the bluegill. I don't think it really matters. And then we got a pretty big circle hook, octopus hook there. And then we got our bluegill in this live well. So, let's go ahead and see what we got. We got about five in there currently if we end up needing more we can always go back and catch some i'm gonna go with a pretty big one i don't know if i'm gonna use the biggest one but i want to use the second biggest i really like the size of it which is that one right there look at that beautiful bluegill not too big you know he's not quite hand size but he's he's a pretty fair size bluegill you know that's something that's not too small not too big i think that's perfect for the bass and i have a question for y'all you, you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys live bluegill fish i want to know how you guys hook them there's been a few times where i've hooked them in the mouth which i know that's not correct because you you can do it that way but i know a bass eats a bluegill head first for the reason being those fins that go down when they eat it head first. Another way that you can hook it is right here behind this fin right here, which is gonna allow this fish to have more movement. And then you can obviously hook it in the tail, which is what me and my granddad did a ton. But I think for today, I'm gonna hook it behind this fin. I think it's gonna allow this fish to be able to freely swim and be more active. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Make sure, big thing when you're live bait fishing too, one thing I learned, you gotta make sure you get them scales off the end of your hook. I think that's it right there, boys. So that fish's tail is still free. He's gonna be able to swim. Got it right behind his fin, see how much activity he still has. Let's go ahead and bomb this thing out here and get started. I think for the start, I might wanna go somewhere around this section. There we go. Oh, look at him running, look at that. Look at that dang bobber moving. Oh boy. If that's not gonna attract a big bass, I don't know what will. Look, he's going right towards the bank. It's one thing we're gonna have to be careful with too. We don't want this fish getting hung up in this tree like he's trying to do right now. These fish are smarter than you think, even the bluegill. But I think that little point right there, dude, he's already running. He's, I don't know if he's just terrified. There could be something chasing him already. That's that'd be pretty crazy. I just don't want him getting up in that tree. I'm gonna try to drag him out a little bit. But how this pond lays out, you got this big open area. You got more of a smaller side back there, little pocket. And then you have this little pocket here. This point right here where it opens up into the bigger half, this is gonna be a great section for bass to stage up. So I'm gonna try here and then we're gonna rig up some other rods and kind of cast them out in the middle and try some different things. 
I'm gonna leave my bell open because I do not want nothing taken in my pole. I'm just gonna set it right there for a moment. He's just chilling right out there. He ain't really moving much, which I kind of like because once he starts moving, we know something's after him. You know, we know something's kind of hawking him down once he starts to panic a little bit. Only time I tell. This is one of those things that we just gotta be patient today. I think we're gonna get the bites that we want. Hopefully we'll end up landing one of these 10 pounders. And if we don't, we can always come back for another episode. And if that's what you guys wanna see. If you guys wanna see another one of these, let me know. Comment section down below, hit the like button, get this thing to 10,000 likes. I know we can do it. Let's go catch a big fish. All right, guys, we just picked out this one. Noah threw a bigger one on, so I'm going with a little bit smaller size. But let's get this guy on the hook, and I'm going to hook it pretty much the same exact way that Noah did. If you hook them, like, too far in the tail, sometimes they have trouble moving. So that should be perfect. Go ahead and bomb this thing out there. We got it all rigged up. We're going to go with the Happy Gilmore cache and get this thing out there. It might kill it, though. You got to be careful with them. I'm trying to be, like, gentle, but I do want to get him out. Mmm, he hit pretty hard. Let's see if he moves that thing around. All right, guys, I think this little pocket. Hopefully that didn't hurt him. Yeah, it looks like he's still swimming. Okay. It's one thing when you're bluegill fishing, the more you cast them out, the more they're hitting the water like that, you know, they just get more lethargic. And at the end of the day, you don't want them to be lethargic. You want them to be moving. So we're gonna try to free line this fish. Need to get him back in the water quick though. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this bobber off and then see if that can help us land one of these fish. I think this will allow him to move around more freely, kind of do whatever he wants. No. I'm not even sure what just happened there, but our bluegill is gone. <laughs> so our bluegill flew off the hook, but we do have more. And we're gonna do a little bit of a different strategy this time. We're gonna hook it up a little bit different. So instead of rigging this thing from the top, we're actually gonna go from the bottom. I got recommended from one of my friends to try this. We're gonna hook that through there. And we're gonna get this guy in the water. I don't know if I mentioned it, but we are gonna do this one without a bobber. Noah's still rocking the bobber, but I'm gonna try it without it. And I think if we try a couple different things here, we should end up getting getting that big bass to eat one of these things. So let's bomb this guy out there. This will be a little more difficult just because we're free lining it, but I also feel like it's going to give that fish a little bit more action. This thing has been calm for a while and now he's starting to move. He's going to the left a good bit. I already feel like this fish is pretty lethargic. The fact that he's moving makes me wonder if something's scaring him. It's starting to move a little bit more out there, guys. I'm hoping there's something tracking it down. It's starting to move. It's going up that whole wall right there, which is in a perfect spot in my opinion. If he was a little bit closer, I prefer that. He's just kind of working his way up that bank. That's exactly what I want him to do. Uh-oh, he's there might be something after him, or at least in the vicinity. There's a dang turtle or something on it. That's probably what's making him freak out. Oh, there's something chasing him 100%. What do I do about that gator? I ain't letting him ruin our day of fishing. That's, that's for sure. Guys, something's messing with my, my bluegill over here. I originally casted him right there. He has gone all the way over here. He's starting to go out more. He's moving a lot more. This gator is so excited to come over there to that bobber because it's moving so much. I'm going to make sure that's not a problem for us today because that's going to be annoying. Right when we start getting bites, he's messing. Yeah, he's going towards it, Connor. Look. I mean, I don't know what to do there other than just, I, I can't, I mean, I waited 30 minutes for this thing to finally start getting active. Once he figures out it's just a piece of plastic, maybe he'll stop. Yeah. He just put his nose on it and just kind of, like it's a little toy. <laughs> that fish sees that gator and he's getting fired up. Hey, maybe it'll entice a bite. I don't know. I don't know how bass are with gators. Can he just stop? He was being so good a second ago. You know what I mean? Oh no. Please get out of the way. No, 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 no. <laughs> No. What do I do, bro? Where's the bobber? It's in his mouth. Give me my bobber back. Give me it back. Oh my gosh, this is not good. This would happen. This would happen. He don't have my hook, but what do I do, bro? I didn't think you would actually. Oh my God, you're so annoying, dude. Oh, you're dumb, bro. Now he's got my hook, Connor. Now he's got my dang hook. I tried to warn you to not go that, over that there. still counts though, right? <laughs> it ain't a 10 pound bass but i mean what do we do maybe we bring him in give him a hug did we not try to warn him we did we to, tried to, to warn to him not, and he didn't even have the hook he just had the bobber i don't want to get him too close i don't know what to do here. yeah bro. i don't really know what to do i still know how to handle this i was hoping he was just going to go up to it and just kind of go away you know 
I got them in his hand. It's not even that bad. Oh gosh. I was taking your line. Be careful with your rod. He didn't only get into mine. He got into yours. Like he just totally ruined his day and our day. Yeah, see, it's right in his arm. I just want to get him off. I'm not trying to hurt you, buddy. I, I wish you wouldn't have. Wish you wouldn't have done all that. I'll tell you, I'm having a good dang fight. He's holding down, bro. Oh, he's in the tree now. Oh my God. See, he's wrapped in. Oh my God. That's my line, old. Yep, let's call DNR. <sighs> I mean, what do we do here? I honestly have no idea. I can't believe my dang line's holding up through all of this. How do you even do this? Oh, dude. Hey, the kicking rod catches everything, dude. Yeah, the most personal thing out I there. I think that's your line that's all raveled up there. Oh, be careful. Yeah. Last thing you want is that thing snapping at you. I think he's more scared of us. He ain't yeah, liking. No, he, is. he ain't liking what's going down. Be careful. Okay. Okay. Well, guys, we got Connor somehow got him off there, and now we're in a big mess. We're <laughs> look at this. We got my bobber, my weight, my hook, everything, my dang line, Connor's line. That, that was what I was worried about was going to happen. Well. Okay, that was that was not quite what, interesting. Not what I expected today. I mean, I just had a feeling that he was gonna be a little crazy about that bobber. You know, initially when he came up to it, I just didn't expect him to, I didn't expect him to eat it. So what he did is he came up and tried to eat the bobber and then he somehow got wrapped in the line. And from then on out, it was just not good. You can see his little teeth marks. He barely bit it. He happened to get hooked in the foot. If it wasn't for that, none of this would have happened. So now Connor's, where's your stuff? Is it totally broke? It's gone. <laughs> yeah, Connor's totally broke off. I'm totally broke off. We got a good rig. We got a re-rig here. Well, we haven't caught a bass yet, Connor, but we caught something. I've been catching bullfrogs and freaking gator. Back to the circle here. A little regame. Not what we wanted. Connor was just getting his bait in the right. Both of us, we were both getting our baits in the prime zones, bro. Till that guy just had to ruin our little zone right there. Obviously not fishing for those. That is not the objective i wish i could have avoided that whole scenario my bait was finally getting chased by a fish and he happened to try to come up i thought he was just gonna come up and see oh it's a bobber and then walk away but he wanted to get a little too much into it and he got wrapped up and hooked up and he was pushing the boundaries and he found out that wasn't what he needed to be doing at least he knows now maybe he won't mess with us no more i'm just glad we got him safely released back in the pond too that's what matters too obviously i'm not the biggest fan of gators but at the same time all wildlife we need to make sure they're safe and at least he safely got released back in the pond me and connor were talking about it. if it was us we wouldn't have them dang gators in the pond <laughs> definitely not i'd have him in my fridge for dinner Heck yeah, some old alligator tail. That's so good, man. It tastes like chicken. Chewy chicken. All right, guys. So we are re-rigged re up. We got our bobber. We got our hook. I believe we only have two bluegill left because Connor ended up losing one. And then we lost both of those in that just freak accident. So we got a big one and a small one. I kind of want to ask Connor what he wants to do because he's going to free line his. I'm going to keep mine on the bobber. So I don't know if he wants the big one for that or maybe the small one. I don't really know what the best bet is there. But yeah, that was just an unfortunate situation. That's not what we wanted, obviously. Obviously not what the gator wanted. <laughs> Connor's fish just started to swim way out all the way to the other side of the bank and my fish just went, literally went from here to here and he just started to move around a lot like he was getting freaked out by something and then all of a sudden that happened so this is going to be a process we're not going to give up and we're going to keep on fishing for him so Connor said he wants the big one the free line he said either way is fine but he'd rather have the big one so I'm gonna just use the smaller one. Still not a bad size, but that one's actually the biggest one. Maybe him freelining it. Maybe that will be the, the trick. We're gonna do what Connor did. There we go. Got our bluegill, hooked him different this time under, and uh, got our bobber. Let's go ahead and cast this puppy out. This time, I'm actually gonna cast it more in this pocket. Oh, that wasn't the best cast. Oh, that sucks. We'll let him go. He hasn't even moved. Come on now. We need an active boy up to duty here yeah that fish barely moving let me get a better cast hopefully i didn't knock him out i always imagine just reeling this back is he dead no he's not dead he's playing dead i've always thought like imagine reeling this thing back and a bass just comes up and smokes it oh my gosh i'm in the tree no no and he came off wait 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 is he dangling 
or he came off i think he came off yeah he came off oh no that sucks big change in plans for me i'm gonna have to go get some more live bait guess we're gonna let connor fish with that bluegill and then i'm just gonna travel back and we need more I, I didn't know five was gonna be enough clearly five wasn't enough had all these crazy things happen so i'm probably gonna go try to catch about five more let him fish with that one all right connor i will be back I'm gonna go get us some more live bait. So with free lining, it's definitely more difficult to tell what's going on. We are running these kicking combos with braid, so that does help. You get a lot more sensitivity. So if we get a big bite, I feel like it should transfer to the rod. It's just tough when you can't actually see what's going on. Definitely a little bit more action when they're when they're free lined like this. Just can't let them get us tangled up. Well, he already did. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we gotta be careful with that too. No, 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 no. I guess I am going to join Noah to catch some more bluegill. <laughs> there we go. Oh my, boy. Are you freaking serious? I don't even think we could fish with that. <laughs> I don't even think. We can fish with that. He got so lucky and the hook is so wide that it didn't hit his eye. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, we can't fish with him. He's a baby. No way, dude. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I just got a big old bash on that thing. Are you kidding me? Guys, you wouldn't believe this thing is barely hooked right there. Well, there you go, guys. We were just throwing that uh, that little night crawler around. Night crawler wasn't doing much crawling, but the bash went ahead and ate him right up. So we're going to get this guy back in the water and try to get us some more bluegill. It's like Connor got a bass over there. Over here catching micro-sized one-inch bluegill. We got to catch one before this gator gets over here. He's lurking. There we go. There we go. We got us one right before that gator got over to us. So we're gonna go put him in the live well over there. One more, six to go. I got him. Let's go. All right, we're getting stacked up. There's another good size one. Number two. There we go. All right, we're getting there. Weird, cause like I don't even see any like bluegill. I only saw that one trying to eat my bait earlier. There he is. Okay, that's an, yeah. Did you even mean to hook it? Yeah, I did, dude. I'm just set, I'm like not barely even setting the hook. That's like I'm just reeling it to like get him on. Yeah, that's a good one. That's perfect. Well, there we go, guys. We got us our fourth bluegill on the restock. We're gonna get him in the to the live well. Go we'll catch another one. I got him. I think that's a good one. Uh, he's in the middle. I think we can keep him. All right, finally I can contribute. What a journey to get the dang live bait. That was a lot harder than I expected. But we got six more bluegill. We should be good. I'm actually gonna stick to the bobber. I think Connor's going to use his without and let it free line. Let's go ahead and rig us up one. These are all pretty good size ones too. We got one or two like smaller ones, but most of them are good size. All right. Another bait rigged up. Oh, we ain't playing this time. Let's get us a good cast. Not in a tree, preferably this time. I was a little scared. Oh, dude, that fish is going crazy. This is it. This is the one. I feel good about that one. So let him go out there and roam around. I'm ready to catch a giant. It is time. This is really just taking longer because I'm thinking, you know, them 10 pound bass, there ain't many of them, man, but they're in here. We just gotta be patient. It's gonna happen. Even if we don't catch a 10 today, I would like to at least catch a good solid big big bass you know little update we're about an hour back since we oh my gosh these things are so smart they're trying to jump out it's been about an hour since we went back and got some bluegill and this fish keeps swimming out towards the middle so i'm having high hopes but no bites yet this has been a struggle to say the least today really haven't had much other than that gator which is not what we were coming here for it just happened to happen but yeah i'm really hoping we get a bite here soon to boost our confidence and and keep us going here because i'm being as patient as i can be right now i just really want to see a big bass whoa whoa boys bobber's gone 
bobber's gone. Oh, I happened to sit down for two seconds and I look up and that bobber was completely under for about four or five seconds. Maybe something just spooked him. Let's give it a second. He ended up swimming his way, way out there in the middle. Oh yeah, he's moving around a good bit. I think there's something big near him. It's freaking him out. Another update, I actually didn't have a bite. At least I don't think I did. Maybe there was a fish going after it. But this dang thing is literally almost on the other side of the pond. I mean, I can barely even see it from here. It's ridiculous how far this fish is traveling. But it's honestly right where I want it. He's He is zooming too. I can't believe the amount of energy. Either he's being chased or something scared him. or I don't know because he should not be doing what he's doing now. Let's just pray he gets bit down there. I don't know how he has that much energy. I really don't. It's crazy how active this fish is looks like a turtle might be oh oh is that a turtle he's like screw that turtle ah. something there's a war going on over there though there's something going on it looks like a turtle messing with the bobber he needs to get out of there bro start running look at him go dude he's chomping at that fish connor he he's got to be trying to eat it wait where's my bobber where'd it go i don't know i looked away for point it's it's gone Look at it go. Yeah, I might have one. Oh yeah, 100%. I got something. Oh dude, there we go, first bite of the day. Is it a, do I got another reptile bro? I swear if I got a turtle. I either got just the fish or I got a turtle. I've caught everything but a dang bass today. My bait was just getting into the zone. Buddy, what do you think you're doing? Oh no. Oh, he didn't come, he didn't break off. Dude, what is happening? Five hours of waiting for a dang alligator and a turtle, bro. If there's anything that's testing our patience, Connor, it's this. Well guys, there is my second catch of the day. Technically, we've caught a lot of fish, but not what we're looking for. We've pretty much caught everything except for what we're trying to catch. The fish is out of the water. He is not dead. Now this is our last bluegill and he had jumped out. So hopefully his energy's not depleted. Okay, that's a big bluegill. I'm going in, up in this cove. I've been feeling it all day. He's running too. Well guys, alligator and a turtle, not what we want. But one thing that we can hope is that we cross our fingers and catch a bass. And if we lose any of our baits or if our baits are just dead, after a little bit, we gotta go back and catch some more because I'm not giving up. It's all about uh, patience today, guys. We're gonna make it happen. I believe we can catch some big ones today. It's so crazy that we came out here with artificial and caught more fish quicker than we can even get a bite on today with these other baits, which is just unbelievable. I guess that's how it goes sometimes. The other day, the video y'all saw where we came out here, I mean, it took me seven hours for six fish. And today is at a way lower pace. I definitely think we're using something that's a little harder to get bites on because we're minimalizing the smaller fish, but I still think we should have at least had one or two bass bites here. So guys, our other baits are out there roaming around. I actually just put a piece of cut bait on this combo. Try something different, let it sit on the bottom. Maybe we can even go after some other fish, you know, either some catfish or gar, whatever really bites, mudfish, whatever's in here. I'm gonna throw that in there and just see, you know, we might as well have something else working for us while we're waiting for these bites. Might get lucky and catch something else cool. I mean, we've already caught a dang turtle and a gator, so <laughs> why not add something else onto the list? Oh, no, I got him, I got him. I got him. Oh! Dude, Noah, good one, good one. Come on. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a mudfish? Dude, that thing is a massive. Dude. The way he took the bobber down was un unbelievable, dude. I know it's not a bass. Dude, I will take it though. We waited all day for Look this. Look at that, man.